Welcome back to the new features video series for Cubase 7. In this chapter, we'll take an up-close look at the new channel strip in Cubase 7. The channel strip concept goes back to the very first mixing consoles. There are certain basic necessities that any signal path needs, and the sound and warmth of the channel strip in many mixing consoles gave them legendary status. Cubase 7 brings just such epic sound and ease of use to your desktop. You no longer have to add limiters and filters to every channel as a plug-in and then save them as a template. Steinberg has created some of the best sounding modules on the market and installed them automatically on every channel. The new channel strip consists of five modules, plus the ability to move the EQ to any point up and down the line. First up is the noise gate. Noise gates are fairly simple but really useful creatures. As their name implies, noise gates close or shut off the signal flow to keep out noise. One classic use for noise gates is on drum mics. Picture the world through the eyes of a tom mic. Most of the time you sit there unused, casually picking up all kinds of noise and feeding it into the system. Then every once in a while the drummer actually hits that tom tom and suddenly there's usable signal. Then measure after measure of noise. Wouldn't it be great if you could automatically shut down that mic until you needed it? and keep all of that noise out of your mix. And that's what a noise gate does. When the signal level falls below the threshold value, the noise gate closes off the signal entirely. When the signal level comes back up above the threshold, the gate opens. And setting the threshold value is an art. If you notice the signal sounding choppy and interrupted, lower the threshold until it's normal. Same rule applies for setting the release time. You also have the option to engage the sidechain mode. This lets you control the noise gate based on another signal. As soon as you enable sidechain mode on a module, Cubase creates new VST routing options for all your tracks. Next is the compressor. You can choose between standard, tube, and vintage compressor models all faithfully reproduced to provide the warmth and punch you expect. The standard compressor has controls for threshold and ratio, plus a sidechain option. The vintage and tube compressors simply have input and output level, plus sidechain. The threshold or input value determines when the compressor becomes active, and the ratio or output value determines how dramatically it reduces the signal level passing through it. And again, the sidechain option allows another audio source to control the compressor's behavior. You could, for example, put a compressor across a steady pad sound, but sidechain it to a copy of the kick drum to create a pumping effect. And by the way, each of these modules has a meter to indicate its status. The envelope shaper works like the volume or amplifier envelope on a traditional synthesizer. It allows you to sculpt the attack and release behavior of any sound passing through it. This lets you dial in more or less punch as needed. Again, there's a sidechain option. If I enable several sidechain options, and then open the output routing of any channel, you can see that the various sidechains now appear as options. One recommendation, if you want to use a track to trigger a sidechain, consider making a duplicate of it just for that purpose. That way, the sidechain function won't adversely impact other aspects of your mix. The next modules are the tube and tape saturation units. This simulates the subtle and graceful distortion that analog tape introduced as it approached overload. Think of it as a very mild harmonic distortion used to add warmth. You'll have to experiment with the amount and the duplex control for any application to find the sweet spot. Finally, we have the Maximizer Limiter Unit. The brick wall limiter puts an absolute stop to any signal exceeding its threshold. It's not a bad idea to enable a brick wall limiter on all of your input channels and set the threshold just below 0 dB full scale to prevent clipping. The standard limiter is the same idea but with a less radical curve. And the Maximizer will not only place a hard ceiling on the volume of a channel, but it actively boosts the content closer and closer to that ceiling as you increase the optimize control. 
Finally, Cubase 7 gives you the ability to load up channel strip presets. Here you can find the presets designed by award-winning producer Alan Morgan. These are pre-configured groups of channel strip modules and EQ settings, proven to work on some of the world's most famous songs. It's as if you could speed dial a top flight LA studio and ask their advice for how to configure every module in your setup for a given track. That said, these are only starting points, but they can give you terrific insight into what each channel needs. Now let's move on to the next chapter and look at the considerable editing firepower built into every channel in Cubase 7.